do you remember watching the playoffs against Denmark in 2017 or Bosnia in 2015 or any of those beforehand? Yeah, yeah, I remember I, I was, um, actually funny enough, I remember I was watching it in, in Preston um, and I think this might have been the, was it 20? I think it was the Denmark game, yeah, it was. And uh, I think I, I remember thinking I want to I wanna be involved, man. I want to be the, like them games, especially, and look, it goes back to the fans. I remember seeing the fans and, and stuff like that and I just wanted to, to be involved and, and play. So, yeah, I do, I do remember and... I said now to be sitting here involved with the squad and and the likes of Jimmy and 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 Shane Long and and the experienced boys and and being a part of it now is obviously it's obviously amazing for for me and my family. Yeah, was that the nil all draw or the five one? You remember the the nil nil draw. So I remember um, and as I said, like you just want to be involved in in the in them games and. It's just a. It's just obviously a privilege to be a, a part of it now, and and we want to. There's a lot of young lads now in in the squad, and um, and we want to make we want to make history. We want to do well, and we want to obviously get to the Euros. This is what you you dream about as a kid. These games like Thursday night to to help the country get to to Euros, and and fingers crossed that we can do that, and I, I believe that we can uh, with the squad that we've got. It's going to be tough, but you're never going to get to a Euros um, an easy way. So. Does it feel weird? Like it's been eleven months we've been talking about this game now, given that it was November when we knew we were going into this playoff. Like, does it feel like it's been taking this long, or is it just events in the world overtook it, so you were able to park it for so long? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It does feel. It feels like a long wait, but I think since we've been back, like so, when we was obviously on lockdown, etc., and you're looking at the dates and you in your house um, not being able to do much and you gutted that the games weren't played in, in March and you're thinking this we could have been we could have been playing these games we could be on our way to the Euros now but um, since we've obviously been back into football it's just been week after week really um, so you're not thinking too much into it but as I said now it's come round and I think I speak for all the boys I think we're all looking forward to it there's, as I said there's nothing to fear I think we've got a lot of quality and We've got, a, a, as I said, some of the young lads have come in and done really well, and so the, the, there's not there's not so much fear fear there. I think we've we've got a lot of quality, so we can go there positive and, and hopefully get what we want to get go there and get what we want to get and get the win, and and then we move on to to next month. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, Thank uh, you. Kevin, Hi, Callum. How are you? Hello. Are you okay? Uh, tipping along. Um, there's been an increased amount of goals in pretty much every league across the country since they've been playing behind closed doors. Do you expect that to translate to internationals, especially considering that squads only have one or two training sessions together? Um, potentially, I don't know if that the goals. It's just a cliche because it's um, because there's no fans, etc. You could say because without knowing, as a footballer, you might be. 5% off because they give you, well, you could be 100%, but the fans give you 105%, 110% to keep that ball out your net or you, you, you never know. But I think with international football, I always find that it's, it's a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit more tactical um, and there's a lot more quality. So, you know, it, you've got to make it hard to break, to, break, to break us down because we know the quality that Slovakia have or any other country would have. So, um, I think it will be a lot different and not so many goals because I do think people really try and make it hard to, to break it down because it's more tactical. Perfect. And I'm now please correct me if I'm wrong, but after 120 minutes, if it's still a draw, it goes to penalties. Has anyone kind of mentioned it yet or have you decided whether or thought about whether you'd step up to take one if the situation arose? Yeah, so obviously the gaffer just... Like as I said, he's he's said about it already. Um, that's gonna that could be a big part of of um, of Thursday night is is penalties. So I'd assume over the next few the next few days we'll be definitely uh, practicing uh, penalties, um, which is a no brainer really because that could be a huge part of um, Thursday night. And yeah, I'm I'm easy to to take a to take a penalty. Um, it doesn't really. It doesn't bother me too much. Obviously, there's always a little bit of pressure there, and definitely on Thursday night, it would be a lot of pressure. But um, I wouldn't be um, saying no to taking one. Um, definitely not.
Thanks very much. Mick Scully. Hi, Callum. How are you? Hello, Mick. What does scoring two goals against Chelsea do for you and your and your confidence? Has, has you know, did it make have an effect on you? Uh, definitely, I think scoring goals for any forward is you, you're confident. Um, your confidence does you have more confidence because you're scoring at Premiership's one of the best leagues in the world. So to be scored, and then Chelsea's one of the the best teams in the world. So to obviously score two against uh, Chelsea was obviously a great feeling, and it's. It's nice to score two at that level as well. Obviously, I scored a lot of goals in the championship, um, and I did score one for Sheffield United in the Prem. But um, I think there was obviously a little bit of doubt um, to to know if I could score at that level. And I've always believed that I can. I can definitely score at that level or and get assists at this level. And and now it's it's just nice to be proving um, people wrong. And like. Stephen Kenny has has said in the last while that you know you've kind of turned his head in terms of maybe playing in that position. Um, you you obviously feel I know you said earlier about that you're versatile, but you feel you can you could play in that central role in the in the three. So it's just one one out of time. Sorry. Only got ten minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously, as I said before, I've, I've played right. Um, right foot for Ireland. I play left foot for Ireland. I've had a little 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes here at, at front as well. Um, obviously, at the moment, I've been playing as a number nine, um, been enjoying it. Um, and it's, it's a little bit, obviously, you don't get as many touches, etc. But that's at, that's at West Brom. But I've been, I've been enjoying it, and you, you're in the box, you're in the final third. But as I said, I think. Anywhere across that front three, I, I, I really enjoy it. And I still get in the same sort of areas um, anyway, really. I'm, I'm always in the box. Um, and the way, obviously, the last two games, um, the two wide man uh, can be narrow or wide. So it's not like I'll, I'm, I'll be really wide if I did play on the wing here. So, yeah, it's just obviously it's another option for the, for the manager to, to think about. But I'd, I'd, I'd play anywhere. Thanks. Thank you. Mark Hey, Colin. Um, sorry, Mick kind of uh, robbed me a question there. Now. It, was, it was regarding Stephen Kenny's comments about you. Did you hear or read them? Uh, I've seen a comment on Twitter about it. Um, someone commented and I've seen it on Twitter. But um, as I said, it's, it's obviously nice to him to know that there's another option there if needed. Um, I've been playing obviously up there in... As I said in the Premiership, which is 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 a top league, and to be running the line up there, to be at the top the top of the pitch um, in a in a in a top league like that is obviously it's it's food for thought for for the manager. Um, but um, he knows me, and I know him from the last camp, and he knows that I can play in in any of the three anyway. But it's probably just a little bit more of an eye opener that I've. I've played up there and I scored a few goals up there as well, which is which is always good for for player and, and manager. Yeah, so I mean, you we we haven't kind of been scoring a huge amount of goals over the last year and a half. Would you be kind of uh, happy to take on that burden as the kind of main striker and and try be the one to fire us to victory on Thursday? Yeah, well, if if <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely say yeah. Obviously, every attacker here is going to say that that they want to be the one scoring goals or but at, when it gets to these nights on Thursday nights I'd take one off the shin off a defender to be honest that don't matter who, how it gets over the line but yeah I'd, I'd obviously you you want to score goals you want to you want to be scoring goals for the country and, and that's what I'd obviously aim to uh, I'd aim to do that and and yeah it wouldn't be wanting to be the main man but I'd happy to I'll be happy to score goals and, and important goals to help the team get the result. Cheers, thanks. Okay. Just to wrap up, then, Daniel McDonald. Thanks, Carl. Uh, hi, Callum. Um, Callum, uh, sorry, unless I'm corrected here, I think VAR is in use uh, on, on Thursday in Slovakia, which is the first time it's been used for an Ireland game. Um, you're well used to it, I guess, at this stage. But I just wonder, as a forward player, has it changed your, you know, your, your movements in any way, your mentality in a game that, you know, you're... you're judging offside runs or whatever it might be? Like, has it affected your, your mindset on the pitch? Um, I wouldn't say it's affected it, um, but 
it does make you think like you you need to think about your movement a little bit more and timing it because there's nothing worse than scoring and it gets rules that ruled out when you could be onside and you've just been a little bit lazy with your movement um, to to not get back onside before you make the run. So yeah, you you could say that you you think a little bit more, but I think as the games be when you're playing the game, um, you should always be thinking about your movement and timing it right anyway. And, and uh, if if it obviously if you are offside, it should just be unlucky then mm. instead of a bit of laziness. So yeah, obviously Vars um, going to be in for for this for this fixture, and um, but a lot of the boys now are, are playing Premiership in in the in the dressing room here now, so uh, we're more than um, used to it. But just with all these interpretations of the handball rule, there's no temptation to just start hammering the ball in a in a direction of the arm in the box and and take it to the, the, the most cynical level. Yeah, obviously, I think, uh, was it Docs the other week? I think I've seen one with Docs. Mm. Yeah, some of them have, have been um, unbelievable, to be fair. Some have been um, a shambles, but some have been right. And it's obviously, it's just, it's all up in the air, obviously. But they've got a job and, and VAR, you have to obviously follow what they say and, and hope that they're right. Um, and some goals have been given, which shouldn't have really, and, and vice versa. So it is what it is. And, and that's the game now. And we've just got to trust in it.